Owen Abbas Hussain here from Seconds Out, here with part of Josh Taylor's team, Aski Te, assistant coach, if, uh, if it's correct. Um, how's, uh, how's life treating you? It's been a while, Aski. I've not seen you for a little while. I know boxing's been staggered in his comeback. But yeah, how's, how's things treating you? Very good. Um, funny enough, I've um, been busy with the boxing, yeah. away from the scenes. Um, obviously, we're all in the same situation with the COVID. Uh, but it is what it is, but we have been busy. We had training camps with Josh Taylor, Shabazz Masood, uh, Leo, you know, who's part of the team. So I've just been assisting Ben, just keeping busy. Let's talk about why you're here then. Josh Taylor, uh, happening in Konsong. Uh, I know that, you know, Josh has got this far and he's looking for that unification clash. I spoke to him two days ago. Um, but how important is it that he doesn't sort of take his eye off the ball and make sure that he performs on the night to ensure that a big unification clash happens? Hey, Josh will be fully focused on Kunsung, um, so would Ben Avison. Yeah, Ramirez is in the you know, horizon, you, could, you know it's going to happen, but Kunsung's no joke. He's, not, you know, he's won every single fight, 16 fights, 13 knockouts, IBF mandatory number one, so he ain't a joke. This is a serious fight, and Josh has taken it ultimately serious. Once the, you know, the fight's out of the way, then he can work on Ramirez, whoever's in front, but... Believe me, it's not going to be an easy fight than we, that most thing. And what's really sad is, well, I'm expecting Josh to do very, very well, come through very, very successful, and make Kun Tung look ordinary. But Kun Tung is a serious threat. He really is. People talk about his power, that he can bang. What have you seen of him? Well, f- from his Muay Thai background, you know, you don't have that many fights, winning so many titles. Mm-hmm. He's a very, very strong guy. His last opponent, many struggled to fight, and he cleaned him out. Mm-hmm. He shows you the, the serious power he's got. So he cannot be underestimated. He's a tall fighter, and, you know, these Muay Thai background fighters are super, super fit. Listen, you've been around the Furies, the Billy Joe Saunders, and these guys. Where does sort of Josh Taylor rank amongst these guys that you've been around with? Josh Taylor's right up there. You know, pound for pound, number one. Um, well, then again, I'll put him joint with Billy Joe Saunders. But Josh Taylor is something special. I do believe 100% he'll be two-way, unified, undisputed champion. Oh. Without a doubt. I think he'll clear up with Ramirez. Then he'll move up. And I believe he'll beat Crawford. I think he's the man that will trouble Crawford. Yeah, that, that fight's been talked about in, in sort of the... Not, 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 yeah. not yet, but ob- obviously he needs, to, he needs to sort of clean out this division. And I know that's his goal. I know he wants that one more fight, and then he wants to move up. But that Crawford fight has been talked about. Yeah, but Crawford's talking about going up one. Then you've got Javonta Davis, who's calling out um, Josh Taylor. You've got Lopez, who's, t- who's mentioning Taylor's name. But I think Taylor will want to, to create a legacy. <clears throat> he want, he'll want to go up and clean up here. He'll want to go up and clean up there. Why not? And I believe he'll do so easy. Okay, let's talk about, uh, let's move on. I just want to talk about a few of the fighters that you've been with and you know. Billy Joe Saunders being one of them. I know Billy was with Ben. He's gone and moved over to Mock Tibbs. What's your understanding of what sort of happened there? Well, Billy Joe Saunders knows himself better than most. And he'll want to, he'll, he'll think change is better for him. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders is, will do best for whatever, Billy, whatever is best for Billy Joe Saunders. One thing that's no doubt is he is number one one of the greatest boxers Britain's ever produced. Um, he's got to take his career serve. He's got to put his mind in the right frame. So he might think that, you know what, I need a new trainer. I need a fresh start. And, you know, fair play to him. He's, he's always done it in his career. So you can only back and wish Billy Joe the best. I'm a bit sad because I love having Billy Joe Saunders around. You know, you cannot learn enough around him. He's great character, but when he trains, he's unbelievable. He really is on point. I spoke to Kevin Mitchell yesterday about, about this whole situation because Kevin did the same thing. He was with uh, Jimmy Tibbs and then he moved on and moved back and forth. And he said, based, from his assessment, was that Billy Joe and Ben, were, they, were, they were friends, but you know, Billy needed something a bit more stricter. He needed somebody... No, 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 no. Let me explain. When it comes to training, these guys are on point. There is no friendship in this game. Okay. You know, Billy Joe will do exactly what he's told to do because he's, he's that much... He's a professional athlete. He understands the roles of the boxer and the trainer. Make no mistake. There's none of this other becoming friends. They were friends years back, before he became world champion. So Billy Joe knows what's best for him. And I think he feels for the next fight, Mark Tibbs will be good for him. And Mark Tibbs is a good trainer, so fair play to him. But you never know. I think he'll probably come back. I hope he comes back. And um, he'll go on to become what we all know he will, one of the greatest of all time. Sorry, Ask, you had to be of a technical issue there. I don't know what happened there. But yeah, I, I, was, I was talking to you and I was saying that 
Billy Joe's career has been staggered in the sense that he, he fought Eubank Jr., he fought Andy Lee, and then people are expecting him to go further on. Unfortunately, it, it staggered at that point. And then even now, recently, his last biggest win and most memorable win has been the David Lemieux fight, and that's been a good couple of years ago. Um, but you don't believe it's due to anything else but boxing politics, is it? 100% it's boxing politics. Billy Joe Saunders is the most avoided boxer out there. You know, you being an up-and-coming star, knowing that you've got to face Billy Joe Saunders, high risk, low reward, why would you want to risk it against someone that really can box and will beat you? So they'll all talk the talk, and put in stupid offers, knowing that that boxer's not going to take it, and then hoping, yeah, I've called him out, he's bottled it. Everyone up there is avoiding him. You know Canelo's avoiding him. They're all avoiding him. Billy Joe's out there saying, I'll fight all of you. Mm. He's called out Andre. He's called out Smith. He's called out Canelo. He's called out Triple G. But they don't want to fight it because if they did, very simple. And like Billy Joe says, put it all in when it takes all. Billy Joe's t- dead serious. He's got another incentive. You can't offer him peanuts. You know what I mean? Billy Joe Saunders is the real deal. They all know it. They talk about him in America. They know about him all over the world. And they just don't want the smoke because Billy Joe is that much of a threat. Cool. Before I talk about the big man, Tyson Fury, I know, you know, that's how you sort of, that's how I knew you in the industry was your, you know, you being in the corner with Tyson Fury, Peter Fury, and even back in them days. But I want to talk about Shabazz Masood, um, somebody who's gone with Ben Davis again. From what I gather, you were the man sort of prompting him and pushed him in that direction. And then Ben had a look and said, yeah, I could work with this kid. Um, what makes Shabazz Masood the fighter that he is and the special talent that you guys think he is? Well, his name itself, the Maverick, that's what he is. And, um, you know, when Shabazz came along, Shabazz was, he's a boxing uh, encyclopedia. He's a a boxing enthusiast. He's not one of those guys, I just want to be a boxer. He studied it from every way, the history of the boxing. He knows what he wants. And when when he came over to my gym and I was working with him, I was like, whoa. And we'd go to spa, you know, champions after champions. He was doing very well. What happens in sparring stays in sparring and... What happens in sparring doesn't reflect what happens in a real fight, but it was an indication of how seriously talented he could. So one day I took him down to see Billy Joe and Ben Davidson. Ben had a look and Ben, you know, the, the original plan was to get Ben involved. Unfortunately, certain things happened, delayed a lot of things, but thank God he's, he got back to Ben and he's back with MTK and it's just a great move and looking at what he's doing and seeing the way he's training... You know, he's back on track, if not even better. And I think they'll all avoid him because he is a genuine threat. He really can go all the way. Cool. I want to talk about the big man, Tyson Fury. Um, I know he's waiting for that date and everything to be set. They're saying December, but still, obviously, nothing's been officially announced. Um, But before I talk about his fight, I want to talk about his campaign that he's obviously protesting at the moment for Travelers Lives Matter. We know that him and a few quite a few other travellers um, went to a certain pub and uh, protested outside. What, what, what do you make of this campaign? I think it's a very, and it needs to be addressed. Yeah. It's 2020 and these kind of things are happening. It's disgusting. Um, it's sad because it needs someone high profile like Tyson to, ra- to raise awareness. Now, discrimination is wrong no matter what. Why should anyone be refused? So nothing to do with them. And it's like with any, any lives. You know, if it was like a you know, the Black Lives Matter, there was an uproar with the White Lives Matter, or whether any lives, there was a massive uproar. Why shouldn't there be an uproar with the travelling community? And I think it's something that needs to be addressed, something that needs to be done, because, you know, they're one of the most hard-working people you'll ever meet. So, you know, there's just no different to me and you, and it needs to be addressed. And I'm glad Tyson's raised, raised concerns, raised awareness, and I hope it's something is done. I was going to actually ask you, because you've been around a lot of travellers throughout your Absolutely. life, so you've seen the sort Absolutely. of stuff that they've, uh, that they've come across. It, you know, the, best thing, the best way to explain it is when I see a few people and they'll say, oh, you know, this jippo or this jippo, and I'm thinking, hold on a second, this is a white male of great faith to God, you know, Christians, and you're, you're tarnishing them, you're talking about them. What must you be thinking about me, a Muslim of Asian, you know, Pakistani origin? You know, you must be hating me. Discrimination is wrong, and it's 2020, it shouldn't be here, and those that all racist or discriminative need to be exposed and got rid of. We ain't got time for this. 2020, we're all one. Ask you, let's talk about Tyson. And before, before I do it, yeah. sorry, I do agree with you there. 2020, we need to get rid of this sort of you know, backwards life that people are living and talking about races and being racist 
which seems to still be relevant and prevalent in this day and age. But let's talk about Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, the third fight. Uh, do you see anything else happening apart from a convincing Tyson win? No, I think Tyson's got all the tools in, in the bag. I think he can, to, he can adapt to whatever he needs to. Tyson's a unique boxer. Um, I think Deontay Wilder would want the fight, but I think his team wouldn't. They'll think, OK, let's look for an excuse. Because, you know, Deontay Wilder, the bronze bomber, obviously, he is what he is. He has to be arrogant, he has to be loud. But Deontay Wilder himself, great family man, a great man away from boxing. You know that he, he's a, he's a worry. He's, he, he really is a threat. He really is the hardest hitting boxer ever. So make no mistake, he would want the fight. But I can't see his team wanting it because the way Tyson dismantled him in the first fight, and, you know, Tyson won. And the way Tyson beat him the second fight... He's got that worry in sick. He'll want the third. He's signed for the third. But will his team want the third? I can't see them wanting it because I think they'll look for the business side of it. They'll think, we can have an easy fight, make some money, mm. and then cash in and then go for Tyson. Because I think once he loses to Tyson for the third time, I think it's all over. Um, just going forward from that, I know every fight fan, myself, yourself, and everyone included, wants to see that big clash between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Uh, there's a lot of sort of um, ifs and buts sort of mixed in there, Dillian White, if he wins, and Mantries, and Usyk, and all this sort of stuff going on. But as fight fans that we are, um, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, either 2020, 2022, Listen, we don't know when it's going to happen, but... Let's go back to when Tyson was around when Chisora was the British champion. I told everybody there Tyson Fury will beat Chisora, which he did, with ease. I told him he will beat Christian Hammer, he did. I told him he will beat Klitschko, he did. I told everyone, listen, Tyson Fury is special. David Hay didn't want the smoke. Look what he did to Wilder 1, look what happened in Wilder 2. I've told people, Anthony Joshua is tailor-made for Tyson to look super special. This will be, a, this will be the best performance he'll ever get. I think it will, st it will hurt AJ and it will stop AJ. And I feel so because I like AJ. I think Anthony Joshua is a tremendous athlete. I think he's great for British boxing. I think he's proven a lot, Olympian, world champion. And, you know, he's got that warrior spirit, but I just don't think he's the right guy for Tyson Fury. I think he'll look silly. Cool. Final question for myself. Yep. Uh, a big fight... Uh, that's happening in, uh, on October 17th. Oh, it, the, the, the big fight. Uh, Lomachenko versus Tiafimo Lopez. Listen, um, ben Davis ain't going to like this, but I think Lopez does it. Because oh. Ben Davis is a massive Lomachenko fan. Oh, he's a good fan of Lopez. But I personally believe Lopez beats him. I believe Lopez will be too strong. He can match him toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think he can move around and he can adapt. And I think he'll hurt Lomachenko and he'll catch in on Lomachenko. And I think he'll stop Lomachenko. Cool. Ask you. I'd ask you I wanted to ask you the question, but you, 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 you answered it before I even asked it. Top man, ask you, thank you very much for talking to myself. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll catch up with you very soon. But yeah, top man, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you.